Hi there, welcome to Create Box Let's Test. In this video, we are going to learn what a Shadow DOM is and how are we going to interact with the elements within the Shadow DOM in Cypress. So, I've created this web page on which we are going to write our test cases, and I've already exported this page to the GitHub project we have been working on. So, download this project, go to the help folder, inside that you'll see shadow DOM.html. So, open this project now in VS Code and I assume by now you have already installed the extension live server. Right click this page and say open with live server. So this page would be launched. So first thing first now, what is Shadow DOM? So you can say a Shadow DOM is a DOM within a DOM. Shadow DOM allows hidden DOM trees to be attached to elements in the regular DOM tree. So this becomes your regular DOM tree. And if you want to attach those hidden elements to one of the element within this DOM, uh, that's what you use. Um, Shadow DOM 4 and why do we use Shadow DOM first of all? So the thing is it provides us the Mechanism to implement encapsulation. Uh, why do we need encapsulation at the first place? So let me explain this to you by demo So you see that in here. I have this Let me expand this So we have this field set there are two field sets, right? So one represent this light DOM and the Second field set is which represent this attached shadow DOM in here. So let me expand the first one. You see, we have this H2, uh, we have label, we have uh, this input, and then we have got this button, right? And in the head section, you see that I've styled all these different input types and you know uh, different web elements, right? H1, H2, and like that. So if I add any element of that particular type, it would be styled accordingly. But I want that whatever new elements that I'm going to add will carry their own style. So for that we use Shadow DOM. So let's see that now. So if I open the field set, second field set, you see there is only one legend which represents this, and then we have got this div ID that is called as Shadow Host because I'm going to attach the hidden DOM to this. Right? Let's see that now. I'm going to click on this. All right. So something is being added. Let me expand that, and we see this hash shadow hyphen root and then in bracket we have got this open all right let me open this as well and we see h2 all right so now you see this is also h2 and this is also h2 so, so the style that i've applied to h2 is not being reflected in here right because there's a boundary that is being created when you create the shadow dom and that's the whole purpose why we use shadow dom there is one more way you can do the same using frames uh, but then uh, those are heavy so this is a lighter version and that's why people use this now why it is important for us to know this see the thing is you cannot use xpath to find these elements all right number one you, you can only use css selector and also even if i say if i do control f in, i can uniquely identify this using the id is equal to name so i let me just write the css xpath See the thing is I cannot find this, but if I just try to find out this one right, which has got the channel name, I can find this. All right, that's another difference. So you cannot find it like this. So then, how are we going to do that in Cypress? Okay. One more thing before we move on. So this is a page on MDN. So you just have to Google Shadow DOM MDN. And this is the first page that you'll get. So in here, let's understand how does it work. So imagine this is the initial document, right? Let me just reload this. This is the initial document, right? So in here, this is my initial document, but there is a shadow host in here. So where is the shadow host? I have called this as my shadow host. Okay. And now this is a shadow tree. So in the shadow tree, what do we have? Uh, we have that. Let me click on this. And if I just expand this shadow root and then we have this h2 label and input these are the three elements that are wrapped inside the shadow root so now the shadow host gets connected with the shadow root and now this is what you see flattened tree for rendering so in the page this is what you see all right so now uh, here are the different uh, terminologies like shadow host the regular DOM node that the shadow DOM is attached to shadow tree the DOM tree inside the shadow DOM shadow boundary 
the place where the shadow dom ends and the regular dom begins and shadow root the root node of the shadow tree so because of this shadow boundary we are able to achieve encapsulation and css property defined here are not leaked to this particular dom now that's our purpose now in testing how are we going to handle this? So we understand the development perspective. Let's write the testing code now. All right, so I've created this TC5 shadow DOM spec.js. So I have written some code in here already just to save some time. I don't worry again, I'm going to explain each and everything in here. So we are going to assert the S2 text within the light DOM. It's pretty simple, right? So we know we, we are going to say cvi.get uh, we're going to pass in the selector and then we are going to say uh, have text right and we're going to pass in the text in here it's going to work right pretty simple this is something that we did in the last video then we are going to type something into the input box right all right so see so we're going to say cy.get and we're going to pass in the selector then we are going to type this qa box let's test in there and uh, we are going to assert uh, that uh, the text that is being entered is this by using have dot value Pretty simple straightforward right so let me just use the only thing in here all right and with this as well so let us run our test case all right so everything works right this is something that we achieved in the last video itself right so nothing new all right so now let's do the same with the input box in the shadow dom this is the test case let us only execute this test case and the way we are going to do is we are going to first click on that button right this one and that is going to add these uh, elements with in here and then the way you're going to find this simple right input hashtag name there you go input hashtag name and then and we're going to type QA box and then we are going to check whether this has got the value or not okay so let's run this test case and see what is going to happen Say this, and yeah, the test case has started. Uh, it has clicked on the button, the element is there, but it is not going to find that. All right, so how are we going to find uh, such elements? There are many ways, right? So let me just uh, comment uh, this thing out. This is not the right way. So, all right, so th uh, the command that we have to write is cy.get, and we have to identify the shadow host first of all. In our case, it is div hashtag shadow host, and then the command that we have to use is shadow. With this command, we can traverse into an element shadow root. In the last video, we talked about find, so we are going to use find to find the input element with id is equal to name, and then we are going to type into it. And after that, the session would be pretty much the same, right? Now, if I run this, so you could see that. The value is being entered in here and even the assertion is being passed that's one way of doing it now there is an external website also if you want to work on that if you somehow don't like this amazing page that i've created for you you can use uh, this uh, https books uh, uh, com. let me open this as well Okay, so you, you have to enter in the text here. Let me inspect this. And you also say this shadow root, right? Wait. So what you have to do is you have to do cy.visit. But remember in the before each, uh, I have put in the cy.visit, right? So it is going to launch this first. And then you are asking to change the domain. So Cypress will throw an error. So let us comment this out and execute this test case in here so we're going to first identify the shadow root element and then we are going to say okay shadow into it right then the command is fine and we're going to type into it right but there might be cases that you need to traverse into more and more shadow top elements so the concept is pretty much the same and then now if i run this so let me run this Right, great so i'm able to type into this as well right
all right so the next way possible is using jquery and we are now going to work uh, on the page that i have created so let us just change a few things in here quickly so to enable this before reach now so i'm going to click on this button all right that's the step and then we are finding the shadow host and then with the help of should and this callback you get access to this uh, element and with the help of this cy.get see what this is going to return you it is going to return the dom elements as an array all right and now because in this case there is only going to be one element so you get access to that element uh, which is dom so this will return you the element which is javascript element and now you can use the javascript apis like shadow root to look inside the shadow dom and the elements you can query within the shadow dom using a query selector you have this get element by id by tag name all those different options are now available to you and now what we are doing is the first thing is we are asserting the text uh, which is inside h2 all right and you are checking that text has to be i belong to shadow dom and if you want to set the value means you want to type uh, something into the text box then you're going to use this right dot value equal to whatever you want to enter into it right let me quickly run this great so this is how you can do it using the jquery way now there are a few things that we can do so we can even use just the cy.get command to look inside the shadow dom how i'm going to do that it's pretty simple all you have to do is you have to change the configuration so let us open the cypress.json file and in here let's add in a configuration which is include shadow dom and by default the value is false if you change it to true now let's see what is going to happen let me save that come in here and this is the only test case that i want to run so let me use only in here so configure include shadow dom equal to true and that's the name of the test case since we have changed the configuration so we have to close the test runner and restart that so I have restarted the test runner. Let's wait for it to open up. Okay, so the test runner is launched. Let us click on our test case. All right, so now you see that Using just the cy.get, I'm able to work with the elements within the shadow dom. All you have to do is enable the setting. Now the thing is, if you put the setting in here, this will be applicable to all the spec files. Means this is applicable at the project level. And I know we have not talked about the configuration. I'm going to talk about that in detail in the upcoming video. But uh, I just wanted to cover this particular thing in here. All right. So let me just. Uh, remove this from here and what is the other way possible so instead of enabling it, it at the project level you can enable it at the spec file level or you can enable it uh, to just one command or to just one field so how can we do that so here's a test case for that so instead of enabling it at the project level what you can also do is you can just put it here as an option to see by dot get and again this is now going to work so let me save this and run it all right so now this is working and this one is also working so which one uh, did we run okay so let me just right so let us run this great so it is working now one more concept that we have to understand so for that let me open this code in here the HTML page code itself okay so now the thing is this is that shadow host and in which I'm going to attach this so when I'm going to click on that button this function would get executed so you can see that on click event I'm just invoking this function and inside that what I'm doing is you could see that you know uh, I've declared that uh, this is my shadow host and to that shadow host i'm attaching the shadow with the mode open and when the mode is open what essentially we are saying it that from the external dom or from the light dom 
we can interact with this DOM using JavaScript, right? But now if I change it to closed, right? Let me just change it to closed and go in here. And if we execute this test case now, let's see what is going to happen. Right, so you could see that uh, it is not able to identify this element, and that's the thing. So there are chances, there would be cases when your developer have set the mode to closed, and in that case, you'll not be able to identify the element. I hope you you like the concept and the content. Thank you.